G'day folks and welcome to another Backyard Farm and Aquaponics update vlog. This one's coming out a few days late and that's because uh, the first section of this clip contains spoilers of uh, another clip that I wanted to release first, namely the mango or fruit picker clip. Uh, it's a little idea that Kate from Patreon, thank you very much Kate, uh, shared with us how they um, pick their mangoes. So um, that clip, there'll be a little bit of a link popping up in a, a section of this clip that you can click on to suss it out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, the next section of the clip is looking at um, the aquaponics and a bit of a flaw that I've had, well I've known about for a while now. So that's just having a quick look at that and what I want to do to fix it. The last part of the clip is just looking briefly at a method we use to kill off the Queensland fruit fly maggots in the fruit themselves that the flying foxes knock off the tree. I also looked at things like the uh, coffee tree out the back, papaya, and uh, how far the chicken coop hasn't come. Just quickly as well, for you folks here in Australia, just wanted to let you know that I've had a new shipment of root pouches arrive. So there will be a little link you can click on up there and there's also going to be a button at the end of the clip that you can click on. It will take you to our, um, our little shop uh, on the website that has um, not only the root pouches but also some aquaponics gear and some links to affiliates if you want to go through their stuff and see if there's anything that you might find useful in your own backyard farm. Um, so I'll pretty much all leave it there and I'll catch you at the end of the clip. How's it going folks? Just down here at the mango tree doing a little bit of a harvest. I've already taken a few off here but I've got a few more that I need to take off. The reason being is we caught a little fur bag in um, action last night having a bit of a munch on some of these mangoes. He was just sitting up there having a bit of a munch on the, the same mango over and over again. So at least he wasn't um, being wasteful. But when we came down this morning, I found five mangoes. There's one there, there's two down here. I brought that one over from near the fence and there's another two over there. So these guys here have to be picked up and thrown in the bin, uh, mainly because if they got fruit fly in them, um, they could basically hatch in the compost. So it's not something I want to do. Oh, hang on, I just saw another one. So we lost six. Um, whoever had that one really polished it off. So lost six of them last night. So I thought I should come down here and um, take some more off. What have we got there so far? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. This one being the biggest. This one's got a fair bit of colour to him, and I think that saps actually from there when I broke it off because I can't feel a divot there. So I don't think he's been stung at all, but that's a nice decent sized mango. These are the Bowens, of course. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more mangoes from around this side. There's some up in there, some over there. And I'll um, see if I can shoot a bit of vision for you guys so you can check it out. So these big ones up here are the ones that I really want to get off. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to reach. No, I'm going to need something to stand on, I think. So hopefully we can get these guys now. That's one of them. Actually, there's a few up in there. It's two. Tell you what, this picker is so much better than the other one. Three. There's a fourth one up there. I'll try and grab that. So I ended up getting five from there. Oh, there's a few in here. Let me grab you off. And what else can I see? So there you go, folks. Got another eight to go with the 12 already picked. So there's 20 mangoes for today. A couple of these guys are a little bit small. Um, they should ripen up all right, but we might use these smaller ones in the green mango salad. We'll, we'll leave them a week or so. Kira and Bianca thought the last one was a little bit too tart. So we'll just let them get a little bit riper before we use them. But yeah, not a bad hole overall. I think we're up to around about, there's 37.57. Um, we're up to around about um, 70 mangoes off the tree so far. We have lost a few. Um, that were blown with the fruit fly from the first batch, but yeah, all these others so far have been good, fingers crossed. If you haven't seen the other video on this little um, picker, folks, I'll leave a little a bit of a link up in the corner there, and there'll also be a thumbnail at the end of the clip if you want to check it out. How's it going, folks? Haven't done a clip for a couple of days because I've been feeling a bit crook. Um, didn't want to whinge and whine about it, though, um, but I thought I'd give you folks a little bit of an update on what's going on, which is not really a lot out the back here. Um, I've been looking after the root pouches all week. Um, yeah, so been a little bit busy behind the scenes. I did clean out the radial flow filter the other day. See, I was really slack last night and I put a ice cream container over that just to read the, um, just to keep the meter safe. Uh, the pH in here has been fairly stable, sitting around about 6.6, um, six, anywhere up to about 6.9. I just realized this is what happens when you're not thinking clearly. When I cleaned this out the other day, 
I didn't put the um, media guard back in the moving bed biofilter. So, potentially what could happen is a lot of media could end up going into the radial flow, but there's enough water flow coming through that I think that stopped that, so better just turn this all off and fix it. Won't be a tick, folks. So, that's the good thing about having a little valve down there. Um, if it was done by an air compressor, I'd have to hurt, turn everything off in the system. So that just gives you some idea of the flow rate coming through there. So, nice clean water too. So that's all sorted. Turn this back on. Give you a look at it starting up. Slowly she starts to bubble and boil. Uh, one thing I will show you, a bit of a design flaw I think that I have with this system, is the um, water is coming up through the base here, through some slits in the bottom of this pipe. Now the problem is, uh, we end up with a lot of um, solids clumping together on the actual um, the media around those slits. So every now and then, I just need to give this a bit of a shake. I don't know if you're going to be able to make it out, but we get a load of solids coming through. That's one of the design flaws in the system, I think. But what I need to do is have the air coming up from um, right on the base itself with some sort of um, air pipe or um, stone or a series of stones. Just keep the UV out of there. Um, some series of stones just to keep the whole lot bubbling to stop any solids from settling. And then this filter here, or this barrel here, should really be another solids filter of some description. I'm thinking of uh, making it a, an upflow filter. So pop, popping a hole in down the bottom there, popping a hole in there, and have the water come in from over the top there, and then down, and then water comes up through some filter material, and then out to the sump tank. And this one here, um, the water will come in and then down the bottom, I'll direct it down through a, um, like a reverse solids lifting outlet, and then mingle up through the media, and then it will go through the pipe that runs all the way down the bottom here, out through the uni seal and into the upflow into this one here. That's what I'm thinking I can do to help polish the water. The other reason for doing that is I want to keep as much solids out of the sump tank as I can because I'm going to keep this as a split flow system. So the water, uh, when it's pumped out through to the floating raft bed, which will be the one over the back there, um, I won't have a lot of solids, hopefully, fingers crossed, that will fall into that bed and cause problems around the roots. You're making a nest there, Lizzie, are you? You need to get comfy. So, <laughs> she loves laying down here while I'm working around the aquaponics. I think I might just leave this pH on for a while because I don't think it's 6.4. This meter does tend to fluctuate up and down if you leave the probe in. I'd say it's got something to do with the gunk just accumulating down the bulb there. So I'll just leave him in. So just adding this bit in here, folks, the pH didn't go above uh, 6.5. So I am dosing up with some calcium hydroxide just to raise the pH. Just a teaspoon, heap teaspoon, mixed in with some water in this sump tank here and away we go. Just quickly, I ended up pulling out the beans that were here. We started to see some bronzing on one or two of the bits of fruit and also too, um, the centre was starting to look like it had been affected by the mites. So just easier to pull them out. Uh, I will be popping something else back in here, whether it's going to be a couple of lettuce seeds or something, um, I'm not too sure. How's it going folks? Thought I'd just give you a bit of a look at um, a little job we've been doing every day. And that is filling up this bucket with mangoes that have fallen or been knocked off our tree by the flying foxes or fruit bats. Just to give you a look at what we've got down in here, we've got a load of dead maggots, uh, fruit fly, Queensland fruit fly maggots, all over the fruit down there. You might be able to make out a load of small little uh, maggots that have died down there. And they've all pretty much all just been killed by having this bucket here sealed up and out in the sun, as you can see, it's around about 5.30 and it's still in a, a position that gets full sun. So the reason I'm doing this is I don't want those um, fruit fly maggots to pupate in the compost if I throw them in the compost. So I'm just solarizing them here in this bucket. Uh, I should really have a larger bucket, one of those big 60 litre um, garbage bins that would do the trick. The black ones uh, would attract the heat a lot better, or will absorb the heat a lot better being black. But this is just what I've got here on hand. So what I do with these guys is generally in the morning, I didn't do it this morning, 
but then coming down here to the mango tree and picking up all the fruit that the flying foxes and the possums knock off and toss it in there so I've missed a few and there's been a few that they've um, pretty much all cleaned up before I've been able to get uh, but down here today we have one two three and there's a fourth one over here and I think there was another one I saw earlier just down here behind the loofah and aloe vera so those guys need to be picked up this afternoon and popped in there while I'm down here I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at our little coffee plant we're having a few issues with trips at the moment I don't know if we're going to be able to make them out down in there we've got a couple on the branches and I need to look after all I've been doing pretty much all is just squishing them and that's been looking after the majority of them but as you can see our little dwarf coffee in a pot is doing fantastically well it's in a little 15 gallon or 56 litre root pouch and it's just been flying along uh, it's been sitting in a tray of water the whole time so it's always got water available to it and as you can see it's got load of fruit on it um, i actually had a pm from someone the other day saying that they've just watched a clip where they suggest that coffee won't fruit unless there's no leaves on the stem i haven't caught up with the clip but i can tell you right now that this plant doesn't know about that <laughs> loads of leaves on there and loads of fruit um, so this plant has been going fairly well um, you know for a little two-year-old plant i'd say we've got probably a couple of hundred little berries on there when we roast them up we might end up with a couple of cups of coffee out of them so i know it's just a little bit of a novelty but it's actually doing a lot better than i expected considering we only got oh, three or four berries last year the little tray down the bottom needs to be topped up it was dry yesterday so what i let it do is just stay until today and then i fill it up just any mozzie larvae that are down in there any of the little regulars will just die off overnight because it's nice and dry and i can yeah top it up without there being a worry of those guys taking off i'll give you a little bit of a look up here at the papaya there's a load of fruit on there at the moment some of them are big enough to um, take off to use as um, green papaya in salads and we've got some more little flowers up the top there so this one here i did show in a bit of a video just on how we feed up papaya uh, obviously i've done something right so it's uh, just a little volunteer in the turmeric bed there just a little bit of an update on the um, chook shed as well this is a uh, side wall to a shed that we were given by bianca's father a few years ago now and i came across it i'd totally forgotten about it came across it underneath the house while i was doing a bit of a clean out for the renovations so we have two of these side panels that we'll be using as side walls from this side here mainly because the um, the storms come in from this angle so it'll give the chicken some protection behind there that other panel will sit on the other side and luckily enough they're just exactly the right height for what i've sort of um, set up here with my little lego kit so pretty chuffed about that i do have a load of these um, smaller sections as well these sections here actually are what makes up these panels they're just screwed onto um, little u-channels like this so what i'm going to do is grab a few of them that one's got a nice convenient bend in it and i'm going to use them to make the roof section that goes over the top and runs into a bit of a gutter um, that a mate mark has given us thank you very much mark and for the rest of the structure i'm still going to be using this school fencing and also this um, channel this channel fits nicely around the um these wide sections of the fence so um, it just helps to keep everything nice and tight but i was hoping to have um, more work done on that this this weekend by this weekend sorry for you folks but my migraine and noggin had other ideas so i should probably get to picking up these um, mangoes and i'll pop them in the bucket and pop it back up in the sun to kill off any maggots in there so we didn't end up working on the chicken coop at all this weekend yesterday it was just too hot uh, even in the house in the kitchen it was registering 39.6 celsius out here in the sun it was full sun it was just blistering hot so yeah we didn't do anything yesterday and today i've been trying to catch up on all the root pouch orders and also finishing off editing this clip together for you guys to check out so uh, this coming week though it will be a lot cooler today was about 38 this week though is supposed to be a lot cooler it's supposed to drop down to about 31 degrees celsius so i'll pop out here and do a little bit of work on the shed by myself get kira to give me a bit of a hand and by the time next vlog comes around there'll be a bit of an update and hopefully a bit of um, progress made on the chicken coop 
Uh, just once more, a quick reminder, I do have that little shop if you want to check it out with the root pouches, aquaponic gear. Uh, it's got a link to my Amazon influencer store and also some of other affiliates as well. And I've still got 10% discount on the veggie pods if you're interested. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own gardens are booming and I will catch you next clip. Cheers all. Have a top one.